I, I'm, I'm honored um, to have uh, this gentleman in with us. This is a guy who, um, he doesn't know this, but he changed my life. Um, uh, I wrote, uh, or I read uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, and it changed my thinking. And it is, when you understand, you can, um, you can do it. And there are just some principles that, you, um, that free you up. And when you start to embrace them, um, your life changes. Robert uh, Kiaski is uh, um, co-author of a new book with uh, Donald Trump. It is called Midas Touch. Um, and um, he has uh, sold, I don't know, how many billions of books? Uh, how many millions of books have you sold? Over 30 million. Over 30 million. Um, he is here to tell us, and we were just talking off the air about, uh, I, can, I can think like these radicals, and I know what's coming, but I can't help people prepare because I don't, I don't know. I'm not you. And I watched one of your seminars, and I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, you believe the same stuff I do on what's coming. Right. Are we pretty close? Right, very yeah. much so. How, how do people prepare? Where, where do you even begin? Well, that's what we're talking about during the break, is my question since I was a kid is, how come there's no financial education in our schools? Is that just an oversight? Is that a mistake? Or is that, oh, we just forgot? You know, because rich or poor, smart or stupid, you know, working or unworking, will use money. And for some reason, they seem to have forgotten that. And I come, you know, my poor dad was the head of education for the state of Hawaii. He was a very good man, Ph.D. But he had that kind of belief that the love of money was the root of all evil. And he thought that the rich were evil. Whereas my rich dad was a man who thought my dad, my poor dad was evil. <laughs> And it's, it was so classic, capitalist versus communist. You know, most school teachers, whether they know it or not, are socialist, verging mm -hmm. on communist, some fascist. Right. They'll never know that because they don't study that. Right. So my growing up as a kid from nine years old, <laughs> my rich dad was anti-union, and my poor dad was head of the teachers' union. So as a kid, I'm sitting there going, you know, ping pong, ping pong, ping pong. And I didn't know who to follow or believe. So I went to, uh, in 1969, I had a good job with Standard Oil. And uh, Vietnam War was still on. I was draft exempt because of the three letter word, oil. <laughs> and uh, I quit my high paying job with Standard in California. And I went to flight school for the Marine Corps and I went to Vietnam. I wanted to find out who was telling the truth about war and why we were there. And all. I just wanted to find out, you know, you check it out. Wow. So I went to Vietnam and I came back and it's exactly as you're saying. We're being lied to. You know, here I'm Marine and I, I now don't trust my government. Do you know how bad that makes you feel? Go, am I on the wrong side? You know, am I, am I just a puppet for the oil companies? Robert, can I tell you something? Yeah. I, I read a book um, about five or six years ago, it was called The Blacklisting of History, and it was about um, Joseph McCarthy. Yeah. I actually closed the book after like the first couple of chapters, and I thought, I have to think about this, because mm -hmm. if I go down this rabbit hole, I don't know if I want to yes. not trust my government, and I don't. Yes. But, I mean, we are yes. all being lied to. Yes. So, I mean, yes. I, I can, I yeah, can relate. It's, it's not comfortable. No, it's bad. You know, you go, what have I been taught in school? Right. And so when I came back in 1973, my poor dad, the school teacher, was unemployed because he was a PhD, he's 50 years old, and he made the tragic mistake of running for political offices for gov lieutenant governor of the state of Hawaii, and he found out how dirty politics is. So here he is, a prime of life, 50-something, PhD, and unemployed, and I come home from the war, people are spitting at me because I'm a Marine, you know, calling me all the names in the world, and I come back and I said, I just lost so many of my friends. What did I fight for? And my dad is sitting there, and he says to me, he says, you know, you should go back to school, get your PhD, and get a job with the government. I said, Dad, you did that. It didn't work. He says, but you have to. And then I realized he didn't know anything else. You know, he was a product of his own educational system. Mm -hmm. And it's exactly as you were saying tonight, 
it's time you think for yourself. Not that it's popular, not that it's the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. You'd better have a gut check and say, what's right for me? What do I want to think? You know, am I just going to be told what to do and do as everybody else does and go along with the crowd? Or am I going to take a stand? And I want to talk to everybody out there and said, this is the bravest guy I know because I've watched you for years and going, this guy's crazy. <laughs> I mean, you've got to be crazy to say what you're saying because it's not wait, popular. Wait. It's not popular. Okay, it's not crazy because you don't believe it. It's crazy because... It's dangerous. It's dangerous. What you're saying is dangerous. Why? In what way? Because it's close to the truth. You're getting closer. You know, you get closer to it. And so I just, I have tremendous respect for your courage mm -hmm. and your leadership, because that's what's lacking in politics is leadership. And America really has a leadership problem, not an economic problem, if you look at it that way. But really from the people. We really, we don't know. We don't even lead in our own lives. We it's this wild circle where we elect leaders to follow us, but we're not even leading them. They take it from us. So it's a circle where we're all just spiraling down a drain. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Because we don't know. Okay, so first of all, could you, could you show me the, uh, what is this, the, uh, how the system is rigged? Could you go to the chalkboard and show the system of how the system is rigged? I, I think this is one of the most fascinating things. By the way, Raj is here because uh, Rara is with us uh, on uh, Liberty Treehouse today. Which one did you want? This, the, 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 the quadrant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, unbelievable. Watch this. In the world of business and money, there are four different types of people, mm -hmm. no matter where you are. E stands for employee, and our school systems do a great job of creating employees. That's what they always, the mantra is, go to school to get a job. S stands for the smart guys. These are the doctors, lawyers, the self-employed, small business. So most people, I would say 95% are E's and S's because they went to school and got a job. The B stands for big business, and as you say, you don't trust them either. It's a good thing. And I stands for investor. Now there's very different types of investors. But the problem, the reason the big tax fight is on right now is that 1943, employees lost control of taxes. That was a, right in the middle of World War II. And at that point, they put in that withholding uh, tax thing. So employees, whether you're the janitor or a CEO, you're taxed. You know, like uh, guys like his name. Anyway, they're taxed the highest. 1986, the small business owner, the doctors and lawyers, lost their rights too. The only people that have tax benefits. How, how did they lose their rights in 1986? It was, they, they, took, they took away the rights these guys had. See, these guys, I hate to say this, I'm not saying it's fair. You know, I've, that's why my book is called The Unfair Advantage. Yeah. Is these guys can pay zero tax. I'm not saying this it's is fair. The Warren, this is the Warren Buffett thing. That's the, 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 the argument that's going on now. I know, I know, it hacks me off too. But that's what, that's what the case is. They're saying, they don't pay, uh, these billionaires, billionaires don't, make, don't pay any taxes. Well, it goes back to what you said. Who makes the tax law? It's a golden rule, right? Who has mm -hmm. a goal makes the rules. Right. Why does GE pay no tax? Because they help make the rules. Yes. Yes. And this idea that your vote counts is the biggest lie because after the McGain fine goal, you know, they tried to get the campaign spending laws yes. under control and the Supreme Court wiped them out. Right. Today, if you don't have a million dollars, you don't have a vote. That's the truth. So what happens is, and I'm not saying it's fair, people get angry at me, but I operate on this side. I made my choice back in 1973 when I came back from Vietnam, I said, I'm going to join my rich dad. I'm going to understand what he knows. It's my choice of what goes into my head and who tells me what to do. See, most people over here are like sheep. They go to school to get a job. They go, why am I paying tax? Because you weren't taught anything about it. And then worst of all, then they put their money in 401ks and IRAs. The worst tax thing you can put your money into. See, the, you know, Glenn, what you're saying is true. The truth will set you free, but the truth is in tax law. You see, if you understand tax law, you will understand the truth. And, the, and these guys here make the rules simply because they have the money. Okay, so I'm, a, I'm an ass. Right. 
ass. You pay a lot more tax than I do. Right. But I want to be an ass. I, I, yes. I, I want to be an entrepreneur. I, I believe in the power of the individual. I don't want to be a B. Oh, uh, let me make something. Is, S stands for small entrepreneur, this is big entrepreneur. It doesn't right. really make any difference. You know, it's, it's in the tax law. So let me give you the clue, okay? Okay. The tax code, this thousand something pages, whatever it is, is really a code on tax incentives or stimulus plans. Right. They tell you, I do what capitalism is. The, the tax law says, if you do what I want done, we'll give you a tax break. So I have tons of real estate. I have apartment houses. I get huge tax breaks because the tax department or the government wants me to provide housing. If I didn't provide housing, it would be communism with government housing. So the tax code is really capitalist. And they're saying, if you guys do this, you provide housing, you'll get a tax break. What you do is this, you're getting huge tax breaks also because you employ people. And the government wants us to create jobs. The trouble is these guys don't see it that way. The other thing that I invest in heavily is oil, but not oil stocks. If we don't have oil, civilization, as we know, stops. stops. So I'm always incentivized to drill for more oil through oil partnerships, not oil stocks. That's the tax law. And if you understand tax law, you'll understand okay, why so the rich are getting richer. How can we, how, how can we stop this? I mean, I, I, Become capitalists. Do what the government wants done. I build apartment houses. I provide housing for all of it. You know, when the when the when the the but subprime. But you know what? You are being targeted now, though, too. I mean, I have a friend who's. I have John Huntsman. I have John Huntsman Senior. is a good friend of mine, and smart he guy. built a smart guy and builds hospitals and everything. He's giving everything away. Yes. Okay. He's he's done it all right. He's under attack too. Yes. So how do you stop it? From, from having the control. I don't want to do what somebody else wants me to do. I'm not a trained little monkey. I'm not going to dance to their song. It's, it's, it's being, let, let me just say it this way, okay? Okay. Great. Everybody thinks these guys are greedy. These are the greediest. This side. He's generous. You see, the more housing I provide, the more generous I am. These guys don't provide any housing. This is Buffett's secretary. She doesn't provide any jobs. Why should you give her a tax break? You see, everything is reversed. This is a mirror. So the more this is such a this is such Look, an upside down. It's exactly right. right. And you are, Glenn, being extremely generous by being so <laughs> courageous. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I think I think it's stupid, but <laughs> you're being courageous. <laughs> you are very generous. You know, Donald Trump is my friend. He's one of the most generous men I've ever met. You know, he he flew his jet out to pick people up to take them to hospitals. Right. He doesn't tell anybody that. Right. But people just hate him. You know, because he's a rich guy. Well, I, I mean, I know people like that. I, I mean, they I mean, we anything. we try to be right. We try to be that way as a company. Um, you, you conduct yourself in a generous sort of way, yes. and it keeps coming back to you. Well, it goes biblical. The more you give, right. the more you receive. Right. The trouble with unions is they, and I'm not saying they're wrong because they have a purpose. You know, they have a viewpoint, and my father was union. But they think they should work less and get paid more. That's not capitalism. Capitalism is really about providing a better product at a better price, constantly. Look at Apple. You know, they provide great products at good prices and all this. They're winning today. Right. And look at the guys who... Capitalism are... is creative destruction. Capitalism, yes, exactly. Right. I mean, Apple didn't go and, and try to undermine IBM. They went out and just created a better product. Glenn, they're doing what you did. Yeah. You give the customer what they want. Right. What a novel idea. <laughs> I know. I you know. know, so here you are. You're... Giving people what they really want is kind of the truth. You know, what is really going on here? Right. And you will be always successful as long as you're generous. Okay. But these guys here don't provide that much. You see, like, my doctor can only do so many surgeries per day. He charges a huge fee. You know, he does pro bono work and all that. I'm not saying he's a greedy person. But professionally, he can't be that generous because he's only one of him. 
It's just they're not bad people. I'm not, I'm not saying yeah. good or bad. Okay, but what about let's let's go to let's go to the banks. Let's talk about the banks. I don't have a problem. I don't think that there are. Um, I think there are bad bankers and yes. greedy people yes. and bad policies, and they usually become bad and greedy and awful when they collude with the government. That's most when banker, we have real problems. Most bankers are here. How do you mean? They're the employees. CEOs, they're employees. The CEO, you can listen to this guy named John Bogle of Vanguard Funds. He says some of the worst people are the CEOs of companies today. They've ripped off America. They've ripped off the shareholder. Okay, I mean, I understand this is a mindset. You know, go to school, get a job. Over here is go to school, become a doctor. You know, you must have a profession to fall back on. These guys charge by the hour or by, you know, they charge high fees. Right. Capitalists have to provide a better product at a better price. We have to be generous. That's like what you're doing. You have GB TV. Right. I have Rich Dad TV, RD TV. And I give my information away for free. I say, hey, come and take it. Take it. Use it. You know, and they say, why are you so successful? Because we're generous. Not the brightest guys, but we're generous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on, come on back here um, uh, for a second. Um, what, is what do you think is, what is coming right now? What do you think is headed our way? Well, I was talking to so many people. I, I pick it up in your, you're using the word. It's called collapse. Obama's not going to care for you, neither is Mrs. Bachman or Perry. They're not going to take care of you. You've got to take care of yourself. They can't. They can't. They can't. They take care of themselves. Right. We've also been getting a lot of similar questions like this one from Robert from Massachusetts who says, for those of us who have transferred into precious metals, what are, the, what are we looking for as triggers to sell or, bar or barter if the financial system does collapse? When you see people wandering the streets, <laughs> yeah, when looking you, for a place to live, breaking you'll, you'll, I mean, I think you'll know. You'll know. Well, a lot of people like say, "Okay, I have gold. What do I? What do I do? Do I take the gold to Walmart?" Like they're, no, they're yeah, confused. but you're not going to be. Able to, if this happens, there's no Walmart. You're not going to Walmart. They'll, right? they'll, be, they'll be looting. Yeah, it'll be. It'll be. It really will be. Here's a few gold coins. Can you get me and my family? over here or, if you don't have oh, a thank you very much yeah I mean it's 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 really um, uh, a totally different world it's a breakdown. yeah it's it's not and that's a, that's the hardest part uh, Robert at least for me is I've been trying to break people's minds open enough to say we're entering a world that the world has never seen amen mm -hmm. that we've never been here before never history is giving us clues but we've never been here before hundreds of emails asking how do I convince my friends and my family that I need food that we need to get water that we need to buy ammo I mean how do you convince people I don't think you uh, me don't. personally just do it and if somebody talk. mocks you or makes fun of you again I have friends who have put food and guns and and everything else and rented a, 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 a rental space because their friends or their family will mock them for it and they and they'll they'll it will be a nightmare they just put it away and if they're mocked later, they're mocked later. Just do it. Just do it. What's I going to say with Y2K? I just stuffed a whole pile of food exactly in a rental in a storage locker. And when 2002 came around, I said, "Oh, I can get rid of it now." Right. I didn't have to think. What are the that. odds that this passes and we and the world is saved? Zero. I don't think we can stop the the uh, Slide. the dollar. And it is, as you said, the Federal Reserve Bank, you know, 1913. Do you realize in 1913 the Fed was created? So was the Internal Revenue Service. Yeah. Oh, I know. And when you look at all this setup, you go, hmm, what's going on here? You know? And then, as I said, 1943, suddenly every employee gets taxed. You know, the government gets paid before you get paid. How, mm -hmm. how long do you think we have? I, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't like to think about that. That's why I say I have my five Gs. I'm set. I'm working on my business. I'm thinking. I'm reading. Do you reading. feel it? Ex uh, because I'm always wrong on timing. I have no idea. But I feel something accelerating. As I said, you know, I was a helicopter pilot. It takes a long time to get to ad altitude, right? To, to acquire wealth takes a long time. But in 1972, I lost my engine. You know how fast I came down? <laughs> Same day. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's all things are that way. It takes a long time to get here, but when it comes down, it goes so fast. And that's what I'm saying. Just be prepared. 
I mean, here we are, sitting here um, in a break, pretty casually talking about, do you think we're going to go into civil war? <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. But it's possible. But it wouldn't be a civil war like the North and the South. It would be within our own cities. We'd be fighting neighbor to neighbor. It'd be cannibalism. Okay. <laughs> this guy is... He's, you make me look sane. It's well, that's well, no, that's why I say you're braver than me. I've been thinking of this stuff for years. I, I say, that, guy, is that guy's crazy. He's saying it. No, you know what? I, I tell you, in places like here, in New York City, oh, yeah. there's nobody that can grow a stick of food. They, I mean, they don't. They, where are you going to grow it? What are you going to do? It, nobody knows how to plant anything. It would be cannibalism here. Yeah, it, would never... be, it would be Katrina. In some cities, it would be Katrina on a global scale without anybody coming. Um, uh, you see, food is going to be a very big issue in this country because the price of food will go through the roof. And when you can't afford food, you go crazy. See, the reason there's not, not enough food is because we're, we're wiping out the farmers. The average age of American farmers is 60, 60 years old. Yeah. They're not going to be growing for much longer. And the young guys are living in the cities. Even in Japan, there's no kids working the farms. They have to bring in Koreans. And, Japanese and Koreans don't get along. So for Japanese to import Koreans is like a major, you know, okay, okay, we have to, we have to produce food. So people might think you sound crazy and I sound crazy. Well, maybe we are. But I'd rather be prepared just in case. And that's all you're saying and that's all I'm saying. I'm also seeing the good side. You know, I see more money being made. I see opportunities. It's a great time. But it takes courage. The kind of courage you have I'm, to speak what you say. I am. Um, uh, let me let me ask you something—a personal question here. Here I am. I'm spending all this money, and I'm just prepared to lose it because right. I, I, you know, I believe in an economic collapse. If that happens, well, you know, what happens to all this stuff? It goes away. Um, but you know what? Use the money while it's worth something. Um, but I'm moving down to Dallas, and I'm, I'm building a place that is, uh, for our business, that is really, I look at it as a gathering place, a place where people can go wow. um, that, is, um, uh, that is of help. But it is, why, what are you laughing at? Because I'm looking at Dallas myself. <laughs> are you really? <laughs> oh, I found a great piece of land, 100 acres, yeah, spectacular. Really? Yeah. Food and water on it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and Bambi. There's something to be. There's something. To, what did you say? <laughs> and Bambi. <laughs> and Bambi. I'd rather there's Bambi a, than I know. Being. No, I know. There's a. There's a lot to be said for Texas. But well, it, I'm. I'm looking at buying this piece of land, and I keep saying to myself because I keep hearing, "Yes, do it. Yes, do it." But I keep thinking that's insane. I know. That's insane. Do you? If you're going, if you're getting ready to go into college, I mean, I, I keep coming back to the the, the 1930s. People thought the world was going to end. Yeah, it's going to go, it's going to dra dramatically change. Yes. but it continues on. Yes, yes, there will be economies. There'll be a new economy, a new currency, a new life. Do uh, you think the United States Constitution stands? I don't, I don't think so. It's in trouble. Wow, it's already I, it's already been destroyed. I mean, did you ever read the guy who's um, he was uh, a KGB advisor? Uh, was Putin's advisor? He said in 1999 that in the next 10 years uh, the United States was going to collapse and break into five countries, and he divided them. You should read. I'll send that, sure. that article. Heard that one. Yeah, he's um, and and you know in 1999 it looked crazy, and now it looks possible. Possible. Yeah. It lo looks absolutely yeah. possible. I'm not a constitutional scholar like you, but all I know the Constitution was right, was created to create our freedoms. And people are taking away our freedoms one step at a time. You know. Do you see anybody? You don't have to name a name. Do you see anybody to vote for? Well, I have to say my friend Donald, you know, because at least he'd stir it up. You know, you, <laughs> yeah. you don't have to worry about what he, where he stands. He'll tell yeah. you. You know. But the, other than that, uh, no, not really. I don't think they have. The, this is the problem. The problems are bigger than a president. You know, before when we were the most powerful nation on earth. We didn't have China. We could kick China around. We could kick Europe around. But now the world is bigger than us. Is there anybody, any country that you see on a collapse that survives? So in other words, does China have the resources then to say, oh, the globe has collapsed and here we go. We're all going, or do we all go down together? 
I don't know. I still think, I am very patriotic, I think America is still the best country in the world to live in. I really do. Uh, I make my money all over the world. Where do I invest? Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana. <laughs> you know, where there's, where there's oil, where there's land, where there's water, where there's food. And I still think this is the, most, the best economy in the world to invest in. But you've got to be smarter, quicker, faster, you know. You've got to be smarter today. Not the question. The question was, maybe you don't want to answer okay. it. The question was, oh, excuse me. Um, uh, does, is there a country that survives, re that, that even thrives? Is there a country that is geared right for this so when it collapses? My grandfather taught me. He was, he was a poor man. He was a farmer. Uh, he finished the, almost finished the fourth grade. He lived through the Great Depression. He said the time to have money is when nobody has money. Right. Um, is there anybody on earth that has that money that can benefit from a collapse like this and grab hold? I think it's already being grabbed. I'm trying to say to people, I look at the worst of times, but for me, because I have a financial education, it's also the best of times. I have the money, you know, and I'm grabbing like crazy right now. And a lot of people will get upset with that, so you're greedy and all this. I said, well, we all have access to the same books, the same information, but we have to choose. Exactly as you said, you gotta choose who teaches you? Choose to think for yourself. Choose to do your own research. Don't let, don't let somebody tell you what to do.